The creator you're about to meet has one of the most incredible life turnaround stories I think I've ever heard. She left home at the age of 15 and was later homeless on the streets of LA with her baby. As the years passed through one hardship after another, she followed a certain passion like a guiding light and it eventually led to the creation of her YouTube channel and multiple successful businesses bringing in over a million dollars a year in revenue. Now, by the numbers, at the time of this recording, the Mimi G Style channel has 323,000 subscribers, over 16 million views from 322 videos. Let's learn how Mimi built all of this. Hey Mimi, so great to talk to you. I've done my research and just to set the stage for everybody, you run a successful YouTube channel making sewing videos. You sell access to longer tutorials. You do licensing deals for your own sewing patterns. You run a subscription-based academy teaching people how to sew. And most recently, you've launched your own fabric. Am I missing anything here? Just a couple of things, you know, like writing a book. And it's actually not my fabric line. I started an entire fabric store online and we're opening a creative center on top of it so <laughs> this conversation is meant to be about your youtube channel and businesses but it doesn't feel right to completely leave out all the hardships you faced early on in your life can you just talk about how your love of sewing helped you get through such hard times sure you know i left home when i was really young i ran away from home when i was uh, 15 years old and made my way from chicago to california um, and then during the first, I don't know, six or seven years of that, I was either on someone's couch or uh, on the streets, bench park, you know, what, whatever I could find, honestly. And then when I was homeless with my oldest daughter, uh, we were sur sort of squatting in an apartment complex not too far from Los Angeles City College. And I just sort of made my way as best as I could. And unfortunately, you know, it started to get a lot harder because, you know, I didn't have anywhere to take her. I couldn't work. So my mom ended up taking her for a couple of years so I could get on my feet. And that sort of really helped. But I learned to sew when I was really young. I learned to sew when I was 12. Um, and then I did it for a couple of years in my teens. And then obviously <laughs> sewing is hard when you're homeless. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that didn't that didn't work out too well. And but it wasn't actually until I got married um, that I started sewing again. And that's really when it became very therapeutic for me. It's helped me, even helps me now. You're now running your YouTube channel. It's going really well and you're making simple tutorials, but you came up with a, an interesting way to sell viewers on buying longer sewing tutorials. How do you decide what is free versus what is for sale? Well, initially that happened because I was doing, like you said, sort of easy, quick projects for YouTube just sort of getting people excited about it. And I had made a skirt for myself that I had posted on my blog and people just went nuts for the skirt. Please, can I buy the skirt? And I was like, no. <laughs> but um, I was sitting around one day and I thought, maybe if I could just teach them how to make this skirt, I could get them off my back is really what I was thinking. So my husband at the time who was in film and production was like, hey, why don't you like film a tutorial you know, showing them how to do it, all the all of the steps. Because on YouTube, you don't have a whole lot of time, right? You don't want somebody sitting around for like an hour, hour and a half, trying to learn a project. It has to be fast, quick, get them in, you know, interested, and then buy. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll do that sort of step by step, literally walking them through the entire process. But it was time consuming, and it took a lot of effort, and you know. And so I thought, well, maybe maybe I'll make it as like a paid download. And so I did, which at the time was really tough because we didn't have all of the things that we have now, like, you know, all of these digital deliverables. Back then it was like I had to send it manually. And so that, you know, that was time consuming, but people responded really well to it. And I made so much money from that paid tutorial. I thought, oh, this is really interesting. So I figured if I could keep my YouTube channel fun, quick, just interesting projects that maybe would have people excited to want to learn more, then I would use YouTube for that. And then anything that I knew was going to be complicated or took many steps or was going to be time consuming, I put as a paid tutorial. Then you took things further and got, was it the licensing deals and like sponsorships? Were they next? Yeah. So the licensing deal came uh, almost right away. That was also, you know, partly due to YouTube because I was doing reviews of patterns, sewing patterns. 
and sharing like my thoughts and things that, you know, might be like bumps in the road if you were sewing it. And so Simplicity reached out and they were like, hey, you know, would you mind doing some more reviews? We'll send you patterns. We'll send you things, you know, that you can sort of review on your time. And I thought, sure. So we built that sort of relationship. And there was so much interest and buzz and sort of like this quick growth on my channel and even on my blog that they sort of took a risk on me and they were like, hey, what if you had your own pattern line? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it, you know? And so uh, that was almost 10 years ago. And I'm still, you know, best selling licensee for the brand and, you know, always sold out. So <laughs> I'm very thankful for that. So then you launch a whole subscription based academy taking your tutorial viewers free and paid into a whole online school. So what year was that and what was the thinking behind it? So I launched Sew It Academy, I guess we're going on six years. So six years ago. Um, and you know, the reason I did it is because YouTube is fantastic. Um, the problem is that if you're just learning a new skill and sewing specifically is what I'll speak to, it can become frustrating if you're just pulling up a video and trying to follow along to a project and you've never sat at a sewing machine or know the difference between needles or types of threads or types of fabric. So what could happen is you start to learn to sew and then quickly become frustrated and then not want to do it anymore. So although YouTube is fantastic for wanting to learn different things, there is still sort of um, a curriculum, a way that I wanted people to learn. I didn't want people to get frustrated. I wanted them to be able to start having never had any experience whatsoever and learn to sew with every course building on itself. So I thought, well, if I created sort of a subscription business where you would join for a low monthly rate, I think right now it's less than $12 a month, and every month I would teach you. And the first class is literally like me taking a sewing machine out of a box. Like this is a sewing machine. This is a needle. This is thread. Make it really easy for people to follow so that when they want to go find a project on YouTube, they have the basic foundation. And students who started with me, we have about an 82% retention rate that started six years ago and had no idea how to sew are now making full co coats and suits and tailored projects. So it's been really amazing and a way for people to learn without being frustrated and without a lot of technical jargon that they can't follow. You've got so many things going on, all these money-making businesses. How does the channel play into all of these? YouTube for me is a way to push people to everything else that I do. So for example, and so at Academy, we do all of these, you know, fun sort of easy classes for YouTube projects, things of that nature. And then we're always driving people to so I want to learn more, go to Sew It Academy. Um, and so that's how I use it for that. For uh, our fabric store, for example, we do what we call fabric hauls where I show, you know, the latest uh, inventory and people get really excited. And we say, if you want to purchase, head over to Melanated Fabric. So we're constantly pushing there. Um, it's really just a way to stay really engaged, to be able to create content that, if you're smart about it, drives people to your other businesses. And that's really how I use it. If I had to guess what a lot of business owners are thinking right now watching this, it's, well, I could never do all that. I mean, she's amazing. She's uh, clearly not a human because she does all these things. Uh, it, you know, where, how would you recommend somebody think about getting started, let's say they own a small business, um, how would you recommend they kind of get started with YouTube? I think the best way to get started is, is to just share knowledge. Like when people stop me and they're like, Mimi, I have this idea, I wanna start a business, like what do I do? And I'll be like, do you know how to do something really well? They're like, yeah, okay, teach other people how to do that, right? That's the easiest way to start. So it really just depends on your business, but if you have a business that requires you to create content, then be aware of what you're doing, right? If you have, like for me, I have all of these, you know, sort of uh, DIY based businesses. There's always a way for me to share content, teach people, and that's really all it takes. One, you have to be consistent. If somebody, uh, you know, whenever anybody asks me, like, what do you think is the one thing that's like built your businesses? It's consistency. I've done it. You know, I worked on it every day. You know, I used to work a full-time job. After I left work, I have four kids. I would feed them, bathe them, put them to bed, work on my own business. Um, and so it takes just consistency to be able to post, create content that people find valuable. 
not just content, right? You have to give them value in your videos and your content. That's really, uh, you know, where it starts. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a high school dropout. I didn't even graduate high school. I didn't go to college. Um, you know, I've taught myself everything that I know today. I still do most of my own graphics. I still build most of my own websites, you know, and I would go literally to the library at the library. That's how old I am. I was just go to the library and be like, I need a book to learn HTML. And I would like fiddle around with it until I learned it. You know, there's really no excuse. There really is, especially now. If you have an idea, if you're really passionate about something, just start. Mimi, your story is one of the best I've ever heard. Thank you so much for your time and sharing it with us. <laughs> Thank you, it was a pleasure to be here. And they can follow me at Mimi G Style on all socials.